Cypherock X1 hardware wallet claims to be the safest crypto hardware wallet available on the market right now. And not only this, they actually even say they are at least 10x more secure than any other hardware wallet on the market. This is of course a pretty bold statement. But is it really that secure? Let's find it out today. I had a call with Rohan, which is one of the co-founders of the Cypherock X1 wallet and I asked him a bunch of security related questions. What happens if the Cypherock X1 wallet stops working? What happens if Cypherock stops operating? What are exactly the benefits of the Shamir secret sharing and how secure are all our transactions and the hardware wallet? Why did they design the hardware wallet the way they did? And I was also pretty curious on why Cyfrog decided to not go fully air-gapped even though they say they are 10x more secure and the safest wallet on the market. So I recorded this interview with him so you can gather all the information and make your own informed decision. And by the way, Rohan is not only answering all these questions but he's also teasering a new crypto heritage solution which will work with this Cyfrog X1 hardware wallet and will work without any KYC and of course without giving our seed phrase in the hands of someone else. This solution will be launched soon so stay tuned and check out the entire interview. However, if you are just interested in a few questions then feel free to use the timestamps down below. And of course, if you decide the Cyfrog X1 wallet is something for you after this video, you will also find the link to the Cyfrog website in the description, which will give you 17% off your purchase. Or just type in the discount code MELANIE17, which will also give you this 17% off. Thank you, Rohan, for being here with me today. And as we all know, security is one of the main important features which a hardware wallet should have. And before we dig deeper into all the unique security features of the Cyfrog X1 wallet, maybe you can introduce yourself just shortly and also how the idea appeared to yeah, start a hardware wallet company and the expertise behind sure. it. Sure. Sure. Thanks for having me, first of all, Melanie. Um, you know, when we started, you know, we our idea was like, hey, um, exchanges, you know, at that time had the most mind share. And we believe that for crypto to go mainstream, you need to solve a very critical problem in the space, which is to solve the loss of crypto. Because when people lose crypto due to hacks, they lose crypto due to theft, um, you know, scams, it sort of deters them from entering in the space. You know, it becomes very fearful for them to even consider investing in the space. Um, and even the biggest exchanges, you know, have been hacked before. So we wanted to sort of solve self-custody for the masses so that they can, we can enable them to be their own bank, right? And so when we looked into the wallet space that, you know, we realized there were a lot of like fundamental issues in the space, um, which, you know, should be solved before we can expect normal people to actually, you know, become their own bank. And some of the few problems were like, you know, even the top hardware wallets, I would say, were hacked before. That is one. Secondly, we realized that, you know, managing C phrases, you know, maybe the technical people can do it. But non-technical people, it's, it's very um, bizarre for us to expect them to secure them. Uh, because even if your wallet is secure, but if your C phrases are not secure, your wallet security is of no use, right? And we saw countless examples in 2021 of uh, people losing their assets because they gave away their seed phrases to random strangers on the internet. So, so we realized that seed phrases need to be extracted away from a normal person's behavior for, for, for norm, more people to actually, you know, get into the crypto ecosystem. Um, and lastly, we realized that, you know, uh, again, one of the bigger problems, if we want to see crypto succeed as an asset class, um, we need to solve for the question, which is what happens to my crypto after I die, right? Mm -hmm. So whether we like it or not, a lot of people, you know, unfortunately um, lost their holdings or the family lost the holdings of their loved ones because, hey, you know, the seed phrase was not, was not shared or 
you know they um they basically you know died without ever telling their family that they had crypto and so this is a very inherent problem in the space which is i can't give my access to my keys while i'm alive to someone because hey what if the other person you know takes away my assets and then because in crypto you you don't have a reversibility of the transactions and so when it's gone it's gone forever right so you cannot give your you know keys while you're alive and for obvious reasons you cannot give it after you're dead because you're already dead so how do you transfer these keys when do you transfer it and how do you make sure that the privacy and control of the assets are maintained throughout so it's a very fundamental problem to solve for and so once we realized these were the fundamental problems we decided to build what is called today cipher of x1 and uh, where have you or your co-founders working before or where does your expertise come from yeah so i am majorly from the software background i've worked across different companies such as block geeks which is um you know blockchain education uh, company i've worked uh, with sifter labs which was a um you know ai photo creation startup um worked in big companies like apollo munich as well um and then i was going to join samsung but i dropped out to you know work on cypherock personally um i also had uh, made an app while i was still in college which was doing about 10000 dollars per month but then as a college student that's a great amount of money but then um you know google suddenly decided to you know take it off the play store because they had a change in policy Yeah. And uh, that was my inherent motivation to build in decentralized technology as well. My co-founder, on the other hand, you know, he's from the hardware and the security background. So he has worked in partnership with Lockheed Martin for, and he was also the first employee at Nimble Labs, which is a food robotic startup based out of San Francisco. And um, yeah, we basically, you know, belong to the same university. We used to go hackathons together. and he said you know this is the next sort of evolution of the internet and uh, it would be a big regret for us to not build in the space so that's why we decided to build it here yeah so actually cyfrock is doing a pretty bold statement saying that there is a safest or not even the safest but 10x more secure than other wallets what are the main security features and how does the cyfrock stand out Yeah sure man so when we looked into the wallet space we realized that almost all of the players the way they were architecting their product was that they had this one set of private keys or seed as we call it inside the hardware and then you have to make a copy of that in the form of a seed phrase which is the 12 or the 24 words which the user had to write it down on a piece of paper and then back it up you know somewhere safe Yeah. and uh, whether we like it or not both of them are two different single points of failure obviously if someone gets access to the seed phrase they can take uh, you know your assets out any time they want and, but even on the hardware front you know people who used to think that these hardware wallets are secure will then be realize that okay the hardware wallets are not secure that much that we presume them to be and the reason is there's nothing in the world that you can make 100% secure that's what we fundamentally believe in you can only increase the cost to attack right mm -hmm. as a user now you have to secure both of them so you have to secure your hardware and you also have to secure your seed phrase if any of them gets into the wrong hands your assets can be lost right so our idea was that hey you know blockchains are decentralized why can't my private keys also be decentralized why am i trying to store them in one single hardware and then make a copy of that in the form of seed phrase So there's an amazing technology called as cryptographic threshold schemes, um, which is sort of the parent technology behind, you know, some cryptography primitives such as SHA-2 secret sharing and even multi-signature that you know most of the people know about. Um, so we use that paired with tamper-proof hardware to basically, in layman terms, decentralize the key into five distinct hardware pieces, which is. in our case four of the cards and one of the device and then whenever a user wants to make a transaction they just need any two out of the five things or specifically the device and one of the cards to make a transaction so even if you lose the device your assets are still recoverable from the remaining two cards or if you lose the three cards your assets are always recoverable from the device and one card 
So that's how we designed it. The advantage of this scheme is number one, there's no single point of failure in private key storage. So with every other wallet, the reason why the, um, the physical attack issues become prominent is because the keys are stored in one place and if the hardware is hacked, your keys are compromised. But in our case, even if the hardware is hacked, you know, in the worst case scenario, even then the hacker will not be able to take away your assets because the keys never are permanently stored in one place. So for a hacker to compromise the assets in our solution, they would have to first find at least two out of the five, which is you know either one device, one card, or two of the cards. That's the first barrier to you know the wallet being hacked. And the second barrier is they also need to sort of hack the pin protection on top of you know the five hardware components. And so that basically makes the system practically infeasible to attack, right? Because it's so many barriers of um, security that we have added. It's basically like a three-factor authentication that we have added into the product. Secondly, um, because your keys do not exist in one place, um, and because there's a natural redundancy, you as a user don't even need to back up your seed phrases if you don't want to, right? Mm -hmm. But while creation of the wallet, if you see compared with any other wallet, one of the biggest challenges is like, you have to write down the 24 or the 12 words while you are creating the wallet and think about 10 different ways of securing that somewhere safe, right? And it just defeats the whole, like it defeats, it, it basically like becomes a big hindrance to the user that, you know, hey, what if someone gets hold of these words? Uh, am I doing it the right way? And, and, and the problem is like that experience is not part of the core wallet experience, right? And so in our case, when you are initializing a wallet, you tap the four cards one by one on the device, you distribute these cards into different locations, and that's it. Your wallet is created now. You never even need to think about, hey, where do I keep my seed phrase, those 12 words. You completely abstract it away from the core wallet onboarding experience. But at the same time, if you are kind of that paranoid person who is like, you know, I still want to access my seed phrase. I want to, you know, I have my own way of securing it. Maybe you are someone who prefers that metal backup, whatever. There's still an option on the product for you to basically extract out the seed phrase. Again, you would need the device and the one card and the pin that you had set. But with those three things, you will be able to view the seed phrase on the device and then you know, back it up separately if you still want to. So we gave that optionality so that the advanced users can always back it up. But for primitive users who are very new to the space, they don't understand, you know, what security is. So we wanted to give them a much better user experience that, you know, they otherwise would have experienced in some other way. When we designed our product, we not just designed it as a hardware wallet, but also as a wallet aggregator. So what do I mean by that is, you know, other wallets only allow you to have one seed phrase per hardware. But in our product, you can secure up to four different seed phrases inside the same product. So what you can do because of that is you can import your MetaMask seed phrase, import your maybe ledger seed phrase, treasure seed phrase, phantom seed phrase, right? And now you can basically not only use the product as a hardware wallet, but also as a seed phrase backup manager for all of the other wallets you have, right? So if you maybe like, you know, using Ledger better or you like using Treasure better or like MetaMask better, right? Um, and so for, for in our case, if you lose the Ledger, if you lose your MetaMask, if your, you know, phone, I mean, your computer gets corrupted and you want to like um, basically recover back your assets, instead of keeping it, keeping your seed phrases on a piece of paper, you're using Cypherock X1 as a seed phrase backup manager, which is 10x more secure than your paper by default. That was pretty cool. And um, from your saying, I mean, we can check it on the application. Right now, you only have the desktop application, right? Yes. Yeah, so right now we have the desktop application, but our mobile application is in the development right now, which will be launched very soon. Perfect. I know a lot of people are waiting for that <laughs> because sometimes yeah. you're just on the go, right? Especially now when the market yeah. heats up. So sometimes, um, yeah, we need to be a little more flexible. So 
So another right. thing which you said is, I mean, we could technically lose some of the cards and still have access to our funds. Um, what happens if we lose the X1 vault? So the main gadget. Yeah, so even if you lose the X1 vault, um, as long as you have two of the remaining four cards, your assets are still recoverable. You just need to buy another device, which is the another a new X1 vault. You don't need to buy the whole set. You just buy the device alone. And then using any two of the four cards, you will be able to reinstate the old X1 vault that you lost into the new one. That's how we have sort of designed it. This is really great. And another question which we are always concerned is what happens in the rare case safe rock is stopped operating? Can we still access our funds? How are the safe rock servers involved in all um, yeah, the applications and the wallet? And yeah, maybe you can give us some insights there. So Melanie, we are completely, our product is a complete non-custodial solution. We never access the assets. We can't access the assets that the user has. And number two, our wallet is BIP39 compatible, right? Which allows, you know, uh, us to be interoperable with the other wallets that are there in yeah. the ecosystem. So what that means is because you can always view your seed phrase, even if, God forbid, Cypherock ever goes out of business, you can always use the one card with the device, view the seed phrase, and then export it out to some other wallet in case that ever happens, right? And so we are always... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just what happens um, when during the setup, we decided to go without a visible seed phrase to keep really just the backup of the seed phrase and Cypherock is not operating anymore. Are we so still able to, view to make the seed visible? phrase? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so to view the seed phrase, you don't even need the internet, right? As long as the device is working and the card is working, you will always be able to view the seed phrase. Without the internet, you don't even, in fact, to view the seed phrase, you don't even need to connect it to our app. You can connect the device with a power bank or a battery pack. You can, you know, tap the card, view the seed phrase. It's a complete offline operation. You don't need to require Cypherock at all to do that, to be honest. That's one piece. Because these cards are NFC cards, you can actually interact with them directly through an NFC-enabled smartphone, whether that's an Android or an iOS device. So we are going to very soon open source an Android and iOS app through which you will be able to tap the two cards on the phone directly to view the seed phrase. So that's how you can completely, you know, um, be totally unreliable of Cypher exactly. business. Completely <laughs> non-reliable on us to get access to your assets whenever you want. I mean, you can even do access the seed today itself from the two cards if you know how to program an Android and iOS device. Because Which means you, most of the uh, people won't be able to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what That was my whole point. But you can still do it today. So we'll do it in a more simpler way so that we have an open source app and anyone can download it and basically get their seed phrase out if it ever comes to that. Perfect. I know that you are working on a lot of features. I have seen your roadmap on Trello and um, just everyone, I will put the link down below also so you can check what um, yeah, Cyfrog is doing and planning. Another question is like, what happens if you lose the access code or just forget it? Um, are you able to recover it with the cards and the vault? So you're saying about the pin, right? If yes, you lose it, exactly. Pin. Right. So right now, Again, because it's a decentralized product, it's a non-custodial product, um, you you will not be able to access your assets because even we can't control it, right? So if you are someone who is paranoid, so most of the people we believe so far, we haven't received, uh, even after serving thousands of customers already, we have not received any case so far who have forgotten their pen, right? But I'm That's pretty good. sure there might be some cases in the future, right? Because a pin is very easy to remember for most of the people. It's like four digit to eight digit that they, you know, uh, set it for themselves. But it might happen. We are very well aware of it. So our temporary solution that we suggest to them is that, hey, you can still back up your pin somewhere if you think that you are someone who can forget it. And it is still 100x more secure than backing up your seed phrase. Because with pin, even if someone gets unauthorized access to the pin, they will not be able to get your assets 
until unless they also know the locations of two or of these five things, right? You know, compare that with seed phrase, if they get access to the seed phrase, your assets are gone, right? So that's why it's, you know, exponentially more secure. That's the short term solution that we tell mm -hmm. everyone in case they, that's a risk for them. Perfect. And the inheritance service. I know you are not allowed to talk too much about it. Will this be like a one time fee or a subscription based model? Um, we we are we are still haven't uh, finalized the you know the business model for that, but it's probably going to be like an ongoing service because you know there will be uh, some of the things that we have to keep it on our end and encrypted and secure it you know on our servers on our end for on behalf of the users right, and so because it will involve a lot more um, ongoing effort on our end to sort of make sure that the funds are recoverable. Um, it probably might be like so, sort of a subscription service. But what I would want to ensure is, is that we want to design it in a way that is affordable for most of the people. So anyone who basically owns a hardware wallet will be able to afford that. There are some services right now in the space which run into thousands of dollars right now, which is yeah. not affordable at all for most of the people, right? But the way we are designing it and you know, we'll reveal pretty soon on how we are doing it. It's going to be, you know, very, very affordable for almost all of the hardware wallet users at least to begin with. Perfect. And will this be designed just for a few specific blockchains or are you covering most of the importance ones? So our thesis, Melanie, here is uh, we want to solve custody for all of the blockchains by default, right? So even if in our wallet, if you see, whatever blockchains that we support, you know, you can manage those assets, but that doesn't mean you cannot secure the assets which our app doesn't show yet, right? Because if let's assume there are some assets that were there, you know, for example, your treasure wallet, you imported the seed phrase into the Cypherock. So those assets you might not be able to see on the Cypherock sizing cap, but that doesn't mean that our wallet does not secure that. Because again, as long as the seed phrase itself is secure, that means our wallet is securing those assets for you. Okay, so it will work more like sharing the seed phrase whenever it's time and not uh, sending the... No, so the seed another... phrase never gets out. No, not at all, not at all. So again, I I'll not be able to reveal too much. <laughs> okay. But what I can say is, again, it's not KYC, we'll never KYC. Mm -hmm. uh, it's non-custodial, we'll never take any custody. The seed phrase never gets out. The seed phrase is there wherever on the cipher of X1 itself. It never gets exported, unlike the other services you may have heard about, in which yeah. the seed gets out. I'll not know name. I'll not get to the right names here. But it's what everyone wants, but no one has been able to do it so far. So yeah, we we we'll, we are very excited to launch it pretty soon. Okay, but I'm really curious all now. The problems. Yeah, it solves all of the problems that people wanted to solve it while maintaining the crypto and Web3 ethos. Okay, great. Yeah, so if you're interested in the service, don't forget to subscribe. So I'll definitely do a video as soon as it launched. So of course, a hardware wallet is only as secure as the user actually works with it. So even if you have the most secure hardware wallet, of course, users can still make some um, mistakes to actually get their cryptos are compromised or lose them all. So what's your advice is for all the users who are using a Cyprock wallet or any other wallet to really keep the funds safe? I mean, the first one would be to follow the instructions diligently. I think if you do it, um, I think you are covered against most of the attack vectors, to be honest. Uh, when it comes to hard wallets, you know, if you are wallets in general, there are generally two kinds of attacks that happen. One is sort of the remote attacks and one it is sort of the physical attacks, right? So remote attacks, uh, generally most of the hardware wallets are very good at protecting against that because your keys are never on, on, you know, online. They're, those are kept always offline. Um, what we specifically very are good at solving is the other set of attacks, you know, the physical attacks or maybe even a seed phrase compromise. Um, the way we architected our product is, you know, when even if you are viewing the seed phrase on the Cypher X1, we show a big warning saying, hey, if you give this seed phrase to someone else, they can take out your assets. So we're basically, you know, embedding education during the process itself, you know, whereas with other wallets, because the seed phrases are exposed, 
and you know most of the users are careless about them so that's the reason why it's a much higher chance of you know um, you losing your assets because of that if you want to stay more active in the game right? yes and whenever you want to have some funds to basically interact with those smart contracts always send it from the cold wallet to this wallet but never the other way around right so I'm always really sort of ensure that you do that um, and maintain that sort of hygiene because the more permissions that you give to your wallet the more attack surface it sort of gets exposed to right and that way that is you know where it sort of becomes challenging the way we sort of you know at least help in management here is because our product allows you to have multiple wallets in the same product so you can basically create like one wallet for your cold storage one wallet as like your backup of the metamask that you you know you're using for doing defi nft stuff right so and that way even if those two wallets have different set of permissions those are always sandboxed so one wallet cannot interact with the other at all right so if your metamask gets hacked or whatever or you know the funds get drained yeah. that will not impact the other wallet in the same cypherx1 right yeah there's so also like something i'm always money. telling everyone have your funds on different wallets and have yeah. one just for storing one which is transactioning and uh, working with smart contracts and everything so really separate things for sure 100% now we have Two more security questions for you. And the first one is, why didn't you choose to have a camera on your Cyfrox? So why it's not 100% air gapped? Yeah, so we have a very controversial take on air gap, to be honest, so far. Um, we don't uh, think air gaps are more secure than normal USB. And I'll tell you for two reasons why. One, the thing is, whenever you design a hardware wallet, you assume that everything apart from the hardware is already hacked, right? So if you, at least that's true for us. So when we designed Cypherox X1, we assume that your laptop is already hacked. We assume that your USB connection is also by default hacked and still your asset should not be lost. That's how we designed it, right? And so that's one thing. So it doesn't matter if it's a USB, if it's a Bluetooth, if it's a QR, at least in the case of Cypherox, your assets are secure as long as the Cypher X1 is secure, right? So that's one piece. And I think that's generally true even for other hard wallets, right? Because if you thought that your laptop is secure, then you would have been good enough with a software wallet. Why would for you sure. need a hardware wallet, right? So you, when you think about buying a hardware wallet, you assume that your laptop could be hacked. The second piece is with QR codes. What we, have, what we found was a lot of people do not actually verify the QR itself, right? So they just scan it and they do the transaction. That also becomes an issue, you know, mm -hmm. because you have to verify that the QR you are scanning is actually the right one or not, right? What if you scan the QR code which belonged to the hacker, it doesn't really belong to the one that you want to do it. And so it didn't really solve the problem in the first place it was trying to solve, right? So th th these are like, I would say a few problems then with, you are the third problem we found out was um, whether we whether we basically like it or not for chains like Bitcoin it required a you know a lot bigger transactions in some cases and for when it comes to QR the transaction signing user experience is very slow because you have to basically scan multiple QRs and so that becomes a problem with USB it's very fast right that's another challenge we found and the last point that we found was that the air gap theory didn't really work because for almost all of the wallets that we found out, you still needed to use a USB to update the firmware. And so if you are required to update the firmware to USB, then it's not true air gap. For you to build a true air gap device, you need to disable any and every upgrade that is there possible. Right. Yeah. And because there are always going to be new chains, there are always going to be new features in the Web3 ecosystem, you will need, you will require to do a firmware update. Right. And firmware upgrades are not feasible through QR at all. Right. You have to have a USB because the data is too large for, you know, to transfer but, between. 
Yeah, but there are hardware wallets out there which are 100% air gap where you do have your micro SD card and everything. So this would actually solve it, but you still think this is not... Whether you like it or not, Melanie, it's very, very easy to hack a micro SD card. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. So once you connect it to a laptop, what if your micro SD card is hacked at that time through your laptop, if your laptop is also hacked? If there's a virus that is injected into your micro SD card, that means your micro SD card is also compromised. And now once you insert it into your any other hardware wallet, it will not download that same firmware that you intended to download. So I'm trying to say is like, again, all of the methods which are there, which people claim that, okay, this is why air gap is secure. Those are not theoretically true. And that's the reason why we didn't go ahead with that. So if, if you are added a lot of security benefits, we would have gone with that, to be honest. This was really insightful for many of my users, I think so. So yeah, I think this was really insightful to like about the security of air gap or not air gap. And I'm pretty sure it was, was also new for many of my audience. So thank you for that, Rohan. And um, I got one more question from the community and they're stating that you are using two secure element chips in your uh, X1 world. However, there is a competitor out there who is having three secure element chips. Do you think the third one really make a difference or not? Or yeah, why have you decided to go with only two? Yeah, um, so I think again, Melanie, it comes down to the cost to attack, to be honest. And um, whether you use two secure elements or you use 10 secure elements inside one hardware, the keys are still stored in one single hardware. Right, in, the, in any other wallet's case. And so, yeah, maybe it will take a few you know, dollars more to attack it, but ultimately will, will be attacked because the keys are again stored in one place. Uh, our fundamental belief is the keys never exist in one place permanently, right? So again, you know, we use Shami secret sharing due to which the secrets are sharded into the cards and the device, right? So, I would say our, our cost to attack for any hacker on our hardware is sort of infinite, you know, because he needs to find at least two out of the five things. If he just finds one and however money he might have, he still won't be able to get your assets, you know, even if he has infinite money because the keys never exist in one place. So it really doesn't matter too much between whether we have like one single secure element or like 10 different secure elements because our security lies in the fact that we have this geographical distribution advantage of the keys which sort of makes the cost to attack you know practically impossible maybe you can explain the work of shamir secret sharing a little more as i found there are some uncertainties about it as on the website, it's saying we are splitting our seed phrase on five different locations. However, at the end, you only need two. So maybe you can try to explain it in a not too technical way, but still to understand that a little better. So a very easy example that I found to uh, you know explain that is think of it like a lock, right? And, and that lock has two keys, right? So there are two keyholes to that lock. And then there are in the wild, there are five keys. Right. So in order to open that lock, because it's ha it has two keyholes, you need two out of the five keys to unlock it. So one key will not be enough to unlock that lock. You need at least two key out of the five which are there. Right. So that's the easiest de de depiction I found of some music and sharing online, which I think, you know, will probably allow almost all of the people to understand on how some music is sharing. Right? It's basically that you need two by at least two out of the five to you know unlock that lock one is not enough so even if you have one however you try it even if you have com you know quantum computers you still not will not be able to guess the second key that's pretty much it okay i have two more questions for you um i mean of course you are co-founder of a cyfrock wallet however do you really think this is the most secure wallet or do you see any vulnerability um, in your wallet? I mean, of course, I mean, someone is not giving away the seed phrase and not signing a malicious smart contract. Um, yeah. Where do you see the risk, even if it's just a little? Just the only risk which I feel and I don't think anyone can even solve this, which is while you're using the product, 
you have the device, you have the card. Someone takes away your t- card and device in an unlocked state, right? And they can transact out on the funds at that time. I see that only that as a risk. And I don't think no any anyone can solve it. Not even like, you know, any other enterprise grade solution or any other solution per se will be able to solve this because you know you're actively using the product and the assumption is that you will be in a secure environment to use the product essentially right so yeah i mean you could argue the same thing that you know you're using your bank account on your phone and then someone takes away your phone at the same at at the exact same time in which you unlock the phone and unlock the banking app and then they are transferring the funds out so i don't think anyone can solve that but i i just see that as the only risk to be honest in our world at this point okay and um yeah it was really really insightful thank you so much rohan for your time um if someone of you wants to get a Cyfrog wallet, of course, feel free to use the link down below or use the discount code Melanie17 to get 17% off this uh, wallet. And Rohan, just as a last word, like, do you have anything else you want to share with the community? Some of your vision, some, um, yeah, anything. <laughs> I mean, Melanie, for us, we want we want people to be their own bank. That's what we are building. Um, Bitcoin is at all time high. And so there is going to be a lot of crazy stuff which is going to happen that has happened in the past years. But my only advice to people is, you know, stay diligent. Don't get too distracted because, you know, greed has less, you know, sort of led to more loss of assets than actual, you know, making of money. So be just mindful of that. And as we discussed, you know, have separate wallets, one for cold storage and one for, you know, your daily usage, even if that daily usage wallet gets hacked because it's going to be, you know, securing much lesser assets. So probably that will not erode away your life savings in that case. So that's my general advice, specifically in the bull market. And just don't trust any exchange, all your funds, even it's convenient yeah. right there. Yeah. You've seen it so many times and not only that they might, scam get bankrupt or whatever but even we have seen this with coinbase last two week like for two weeks ago when bitcoin just hit yeah. the time high and they have been out of service it started working hours. like it started working yeah <laughs> yeah and this was not the first time that happens with exchanges so especially when now we are in the bull market bull run uh, might pop up just i so here's market. my take millennium on this i i don't think exchanges are bad i think they're good Right, but I just don't see them as the best to keep your assets for the long term. You can just use it for like exchanging your assets. You can use it for, you know, if you want to convert your crypto back to fiat or you know your fiat to crypto. I think that's great for it. But if you have a lo- large portfolio, I would never suggest anyone to keep all of that in an exchange because you know it's again you are trusting someone else for your assets, and because there's no liability, you never know what happens. So long term storage always sort of use a cold wallet separately. For sure. Thank you so much, Rohan, for your time. And um, if any other questions are left, just drop down below a comment and uh, we'll happy to make an update video on that. So that's it. This was the interview. I'm really curious to know what you think about the Cyfrog X1 hardware wallet now after you heard all the answers from Rohan. And of course, if any question left unanswered, then drop me a comment down below the video. And don't forget to use the discount code MELANIE17 in case you want to get your own Cyfrog wallet for 17% less. And if you want to learn more about the Cyfrog X1 wallet, feel free to check my entire review video out. And of course, consider subscribing as we'll also do a step-by-step setup video for you, including showing you how the transactions and signing the transactions actually work with the Cyfrog wallet. And of course, as soon as the Heritage Solution will come out, you will be the first notified by me. So definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell.